Hi there, and welcome back to the channel. Today I have a video for you that covers something that I don't talk about much, which is SwiftUI. Even though I work with SwiftUI every day and I know a lot about how it works, I don't really cover it too often. I talk about concurrency a lot, but there is one topic in SwiftUI that I think every developer should at least know about, and that is how to profile your performance. So today we're going to take a look at how you can profile your SwiftUI apps and make them run better, know exactly what's happening, know exactly whether that is what's supposed to happen, and just overall help you build better experience. Because no matter how good your app looks, if it performs horribly, then your users won't like your app very much. Before we dig into it, here's a little message from this week's sponsor, Revenue Cat, and we'll be right back with the video. Adding paywalls to applications is a time-consuming process. You want to make sure that your paywall converts well and looks beautiful. Revenue Cat's Paywall V2 feature makes it so that you can create your paywalls on the web. You can start with a template or you can design your own paywall from scratch. There's tons of components to choose from, so you're free to do whatever you want. The best part is that even though you design your paywall on the web, it gets rendered using native SwiftUI code. You can use a single line of code to call the paywall into your app. It's rendered as SwiftUI, so the user experience is great. And the best part is that if you want to iterate on your paywall, that's completely possible because you can go into the web editor, make changes, and still have your changed paywall show up as native SwiftUI. Paywall V2 is a game changer in my opinion, and I think you should go and check it out as soon as you need to add a new paywall to any of your apps. So in SwiftUI, you have a lot of things to worry about. You have to worry about state management, you have to worry about how often your views are redrawing, and you have to make sure that all of this happens efficiently. Now, if you come from the UI kit days, you know that you had a lot of influence on when your views would update. In SwiftUI, views updates typically when their model changes. And if you want to learn more about that, I do have a video linked below about SwiftUI view redraws, as well as a video on instruments, which is the tool that we're going to be using in this video. So without further ado, I think I should just dig into Xcode and show you how you can profile your SwiftUI apps and what you should be looking out for while profiling. So what we're looking at here is a very small and simple application that I built at some point to try and figure out SwiftUI redraws and when views would redraw. And I like using this app as sort of an example of how you can use instruments with SwiftUI because it does some weird stuff when I set it up correctly. So what we can do in this app is basically toggle uh, the state for list items to be active or not active. And when I enable auto toggle like I did just now, we automatically cycle through um, every item in my list and we set its, its active state to be true uh, and then the previous one becomes false. So essentially while I'm running this app, what I'm expecting to happen and what I hope that the app does is if I'm in this state where I am not seeing any changes happen, nothing is redrawing at any time, right? So in this case, what I want is that my app is basically static and idle and nothing is changing. Even though I am changing my model under the hood, I'm not seeing these changes, so I don't want them to influence the user. Um, so if we reset, we'll actually go back to the top, reset and auto toggle, and we'll do this again. So that's what the app looks like. Now, if I want to actually know if my app is performing correctly, I need to use instruments and we can get into instruments in several different ways. One approach is to go ahead and um, use product profile right here. You can also press command I, which is the way that I like to do it because I am a sucker for shortcuts. So I like doing command I and it will build the app and it will show me this choose a profiling template screen. So here I can use different uh, templates. I typically use either the time profiler or SwiftUI. Sometimes I use Swift, concur uh, Swift concurrency as well. But for this case, we're profiling a SwiftUI app, so we're going to use the SwiftUI template. 
Now, what we see here is instrument sort of idle recording view, where we can see the different instruments that were added to our template. So that's the view body, view properties, core animation commits, time profiler, and hangs. Now, let's say you want to instrument a little bit more. You want to also know about your device's thermal state, for example. You can actually find a thermal state instrument, which will measure the device's thermal state and tell you if the device is overheating, for example. Uh, we're not going to use that in this one, but if you know that you might have issues overheating, you can use instruments to profile how your, your thermal state evolves over time. In any case, we have this default setting for the SwiftUI, um, SwiftUI instrument. Now, I'm using a simulator for profiling here. Um, in reality, what I should be doing is profile on my iPhone instead. But because I want to show you this stuff easily and I don't want to run this on my device right now, I'm going to use a simulator, but again, do as I say, not as I do, use your actual device because this simulator has different resources available to it. That said, if you're profiling view bodies, it probably doesn't matter. If you want to profile speed and performance, it matters a lot. So you can choose the device to run on here and you can choose the app to run here. So there are several apps that you might want to pick. I have my view redraw exploration app selected. Now to start profiling, I press the record button. Simple as that, the app will launch and we start collecting data. So you can actually see a bunch of stuff here. What I'll do is I'm just going to go on ahead and run my app a little bit. So I'll, I'll do this auto toggle thing. I'll let that run for a little while. Um, and then I'll sort of pause right now. Um, and maybe, right, maybe this is everything I need. This is the flow that I want to profile. I've, I've turned it on, I've let it do its thing, and it's doing its thing for a while now. So we're going to stop the recording and we're going to analyze our results. So what we have here is a couple of lanes. So the top one is view body. That tells us whenever SwiftUI redraws a body. So every time we see one of these green lines right here, we can click and drag over it to see what happened during that green line because a green line means something redrew. And we can open this up and we can see that state-driven view and two state-driven cells were updated. Now, this already worries me. I know this application and I know that state-driven view is the entire list itself. So we're seeing that the entire list changes every time and two of the cells change as well. If you want to learn more about why that happens, I highly recommend that you read my blog post on SwiftUI view redraws because we're not going to cover all the details here, but we do know which two views redrew and how frequently they did that in a given time frame. If we look at the, the latter part of this recording where I wasn't doing anything, you can see there's four green lines in the time frame that I've dragged over and there's four redraws of state driven view. So what this tells me in this case is that I'm doing too much work. I did not expect that to happen. I wasn't changing anything that the user could see, yet still my list itself is redrawing itself. It isn't redrawing any cells because these cells are not visible, they're not on screen, so they're not doing anything, but our root view is redrawing every single time. So that's not great. So that's what you can use the view body for. If you have a mental model of what your app is doing and what you're expecting to redraw and when you're expecting that to happen, you can now verify whether that's the case. And I'm seeing that I'm doing too much work here. The second lane here is the view properties one. And that's one that I wish I was able to use better. Um, it kind of tells you about the properties on your views. Uh, so it will select a small time frame here. And there's a ton of stuff here. A lot of it is from SwiftUI, so if we change this, we can actually see that there's a couple of state objects. Now, this is supposed to be able to tell me kind of the state my app is in, but I find there's usually too much noise and it's too hard to, to really read this properly, right? So we can see updates here, we can kind of see, you know, what we moved from and to, and sometimes for a toggle state that might be useful, but for other states, not really. Then we have core animation commits, and that tells you um, the commits you're putting into the GPU. In other words, it tells you when a redraw actually happens. And what you'll see is if I deselect my time frame, is that every time my view body gets evaluated, we have a core animation commit. So that tells me that view body evaluation equals a redraw. Then we have our time profiler. 
And that one is probably the most useful one along with view body, right? So if we select this time frame here, we know that our view body changed. Um, and we know which view changed, so that means that we can kind of figure out like what state might have changed. And then we can use the time profiler to actually figure out what our code is doing. Now there's a couple things that I always do, which is I invert the call tree, I flatten recursion, I hide system libraries. And then I can actually see the work that my app is doing and I can see functions. And you can actually see that sometimes it's hard to read like over here. Uh, we have that defer, we have state data, data source activate next item. And so this is kind of telling me what code was running during my selected time frame, and how long did it take? And that part is the most important part. So we can actually see that my code is fast here. So the problem isn't that my code is slow, the problem is that we're redrawing when we don't want to. We can see that the wait here for my call to data source activate next item is one millisecond. Um, that's really fast. I'm not worried about that, but I can actually see everything that was running. And so if you see something that's running very long here or taking a lot of time percentually because you can see that uh, this took 14.3 percent of time it's not always the most useful metric but it can be sometimes um, you can use this to see am i expecting this to take that long right? if this activate next item would take six milliseconds out of seven i would be a little bit worried because that's supposed to be fast so we can use the time profiler to see snapshots of what your code was doing at any given time. And then lastly, we have the hangs instrument. Luckily, we have no hangs here. This will actually tell you when your app was not able to draw the next frame quickly enough. So typically what will happen is if you have a hang, you also have something in the time profiler running on the main thread that is way too slow. So then you would actually see a hang here in the hangs instrument you go into the time profiler, you select the time frame around your hand, and you'll actually be able to see what you're doing on the main thread. Because that's why we separate by thread, for example, and now you can see main thread is doing this or that work, and you can figure out what is slow. Um, so these are really the tools that I like to use when I'm working with instruments for a Swift UI application. View body and the time profiler combined with hands are the three most important lanes that I like to use, but you could explore view properties if you like. So in this video, you saw how I like to use instruments in my day-to-day -day work. When you're building an app, it is a really good idea to start profiling an instrument before you have problems, because as your app grows, you'll have to know and assume a lot about what your app should be doing. Right? When you're seeing a ton of view redraws, that might make sense. If you have no idea and you only started profiling when your app was already almost done and you saw a performance issue, it'll be pretty tricky to figure out why your app is doing what it's doing. If you have a sense of what's supposed to be happening because you profiled every couple days, you now know exactly when your app went into that state where it started to have performance issues. And maybe you were able to resolve them before they actually became problems. Instruments is a super useful tool and I highly recommend that you use it. So again, if you're not too familiar with instruments, I have a post link below that helps you explore the time profiler in depth. And I have another post that helps you understand Swift UI view redraws. So those are links down below. Make sure to check them out. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video if you've enjoyed this one. And I'll see you in the next one.